In this video, I'm going to share with you some ideas around flat feet and what can be done to help out with flat feet as well as maybe foot pain or ankle pain that is associated with that. I get so many questions from people about, you know, is flat feet inevitable? Can I fix it? Can I not? What are some reasons it's happening and what can we do about it? Before we dive into this video, though, I want to make sure everybody knows we are still doing our huge giveaway for the Shift Symposium tickets along with a free course of your choosing should you win. So if you want to automatically enter to win that giveaway, head down to the bottom of the comment section, just put in hashtag 24 shift. You will automatically be entered to win that giveaway. We're going to pick a winner at the end of the month. It's going to be a very exciting thing. I'm happy for someone to win. If it's your first time back to the channel in a while, make sure you hit the notification bell, make sure you hit the subscribe bell because all of the content coming out is things that people are really finding are useful, but also every single content piece that comes out is another chance for you to enter the giveaway. So before we get more into that, let's dive down below. All right, so the first thing that's really important with flat feet is you have to understand that flat feet are oftentimes a product of many other things around the ankle and foot joint, right? It's not only about the foot, it's about the hip, it's about the ankle, it's about the foot. It's actually about the big toe as well, which is something I see a lot of people miss. So oftentimes people will have flat feet because they're a little bit more hypermobile or maybe they do have some issues with ankle mobility and it's causing the feet to get pushed in more, right? If you don't have enough ankle mobility, what happens is as you try to run or jump or sprint or land, sometimes that foot can roll inward as a compensation sensation mechanism for that lack of ankle mobility. I've also seen it happen sometimes where somebody has really stiff big toes, maybe they crunch their toe, they get turf toe, and that ability to not go up on all the way in their toe when they run causes their foot to spin out and have a flat foot as well. I've also seen athletes who don't have anything related to ankle mobility at all, but they're just not as strong as maybe they should be. They're really hypermobile, maybe they're not as strong in their legs, so when they land, when they jump, when they run, if they don't have the strength of their calves, of their feet, and of their hip muscles, all of that kind of collapses their feet inward and they need to build up the strength of the arch to actually get some of that support on the middle of the shelf of what we call it of the foot. And so I think it's really important to start with is not only just doing random exercises for the foot or just trying to toss on somebody with orthotics. Those things do help sometimes, but I really think you have to think big picture about not only the hip, but also the ankle, the foot, and the toe. And we're going to walk through some of those things and what I mean by each of those. But just before we dive in, really understand that's the starting point. You have to think holistically that flat feet aren't just this like automatic genetic thing that everybody gets. And it's like, oops, nothing we can do about it. It's actually a very trainable thing. You can get the arch stronger. You can get the ankles more mobile, the toe more mobile, and work on these things to a degree. It won't completely go away, but there's some, some serious progress that can be made. So like I said, the first thing that's really important here is ankle mobility, right? If someone doesn't have ankle mobility to get their knee all the way over their toe, as you see here, what's gonna happen sometimes is as they run, as they jump, as they try to squat, the feet will kind of roll in to make up for that compensation. We oftentimes see that someone's heel will pop up here, the toes will spin out, or the foot will collapse inward, causing that flat feet. So we really wanna make sure we're doing all sorts of different soft tissue stuff, calf stretching, ankle stretching, ankle mobilizations here at the wall, trying to get this knee to drive out towards the pinky toe to try to improve some of that flexibility. If we have a running athlete or someone who's growing a lot, this limited ankle flexibility is going to cause that foot to flatten out totally. So doing 30 to 60 seconds of soft tissue work every day, doing ankle stretches at the wall, doing calf and, you know, gastroc and Achilles stretches standing at the wall or in a runner stretch. It's really important to do it every single day and try to do these ankle mobilizations at the wall to try to improve this, right? We really want to see five to six days per week. We don't want someone to be going so hard. It's painful, but we don't also want to see someone just doing very, very minimal, right? We want to see someone doing something every single day, uh, at least for four weeks, right? And trying to make sure their ankle mobility is improving. Try to make sure we're doing a variety of exercises. We don't only want a foam roll. It's important, but it helps as a soft tissue, uh, a short-term release right here, right? It's not going to be a long-term thing. So doing things like seated calf raises with eccentrics, doing stretching at the wall. These are all really, really great things that we can do. But ankle mobility is one of the first things I see is that someone's only getting flat feet because their ankles are so stiff. So we want to really make sure we're working on that as a priority number one. And now other times I also see sometimes that either someone's doing their ankle mobility and they're also uh, not doing anything else, or we have a, an athlete who does have really good flexibility. Their ankle is really flexible. You know, their calf really moves well, but they don't have enough foot and arch strength, right? So really what we want to see is there are a lot of smaller muscles on the bottom of the foot that we need to train to really understand how to keep that arch up, try to keep that going. And one of those muscles in particular, the posterior tibialis is really important. So when we do these calf raises, we really want to make sure we're driving through the outside of the toe, right? Right through the pinky toe, the third, fourth, and fifth toe to get that arch to come up to really push the posterior tib to work really, really hard. We can also do this with a calf um, raise where we squeeze a ball between our heels on a slant board that also makes the posterior tib work super hard. But I really find that standing band resisted calf raises or seated calf raises or tiptoe walks like this, if we're really working on driving that arch up, if we're really working on pressing to the outside of the uh, foot as well, not just letting the toes roll in and pushing through the big toe, we really want to make sure the entire foot is working really hard here. And I find these calf exercises 
exercises are some of the best ways to do this. So yes, it's about ankle mobility and yes, it's really important to get that soft tissue of the calf back, but we also want to be doing things every single week to really make sure we're getting the foot stronger, really make sure we're getting the calf stronger. You know, toe yoga is another awesome thing people do, but I find that loaded movements are super duper important to force that arch into that supinated position and really work the bottom of the feet. We can make the muscles of the bottom of the feet work super hard. So any of these exercises, I think two to three sets of 10 are really good at two times per week. I want to make sure someone's not going uh, too fast on these things, right? Someone is walking really slow with these dumbbell exercises. I want to make sure someone really drives that arch up and I want to make sure the exercise is challenging enough for them. So usually a combination of ankle mobility also with really, really aggressive foot and calf strengthening is an awesome way to start this ball rolling in the positive direction to see those flat feet improve just a little bit. And now one sneaky one I will say that also happens is oftentimes people are really overlooking how important big toe mobility is, right? So like I said, the, the bottom of the foot has to be nice and relaxed and this toe has to be able to extend all the way up to 60 degrees when someone runs or when someone sprints. If someone doesn't have toe mobility, it might cause the foot to collapse in or the toes to spin out if somebody's not really able to get themselves over their foot with their sprinting mechanics. So it's really important that we're doing a lot of soft tissue work to the bottom of the foot. And you can see here, we're also doing a great toe stretch that has the plantar fascia involved. So this could be a calf stretch if I put this foot down or if I put my whole foot up, but I want that toe to extend up fully at the wall. You can also move over and just put your big toe here, but putting all the toes up really stretches the plantar fascia out quite a bit. And it also gets a lot of ankle mobility that goes along with that toe mobility. So we really wanna make sure someone has a nice relaxed bottom of the foot. The plantar fascia can get very dense if someone has never really worked on it before, if they're a barefoot athlete, but also making sure we're doing great toe mobility really, really consistently to try to, again, get the whole foot to move, not just the, uh, the ankle joint itself. So two sets of 10 uh, on this rocking here over here is really good, maybe two times per week. Ideally, if you can do it every day, that is awesome too as well, but we don't want to let that arch drop. We don't want to let that person collapse those feet in when doing this. So what we see is we drive the knee towards the outside of the pinky toe. That's how we get that, right? Take this knee, point out towards the pinky toe outside the block, and that helps pull that foot up into a nice supinated position, not that flat foot position. And then lastly here, my favorite thing to do once we have ankle mobility, once we have great toe mobility, once we have really good foot and arch strength is single leg strength, okay? So single leg strength is gonna incorporate a lot of the things that we're gonna talk about. We'll see that in a sled push, but also it really forces that balance component, that dynamic stability component that happens on one foot to pull that arch up and really hold that nice uh, rounded shelf into supination to work on all these things that we're talking about. So I think sled pushes are one of my favorite ways to do this, right? You can see here a lot of things show up when Aaliyah pushes through, right? So one is we see that great toe extending, Two is we really see her driving to the outside of her foot and pulling that arch up if she was barefoot. And we see that ankle mobility in action as well. So I love sled pushes because they kind of get all the things that we're talking about into one common place. All the things that we work on together to get that arch to be stronger are involved, but also we're working ankle mobility, we're working toe mobility, and we're getting the legs as strong as possible. So I love sled pushes as a really, really great way to start here. But I also love single leg RDLs, okay? So single leg RDLs are another fantastic way to incorporate that arch being pulled up into supinate when someone's balancing back and forth, that posterior tip is working really hard to control the arch, but also we're having to challenge someone's balance quite a bit. And this is really where it shows up. So things like single leg um, step ups or RDLs or sled pushes, these are really great ways to force somebody onto one leg that pulls that arch up quite a bit. So maybe three sets of eight to 10 of these single leg RDLs, or maybe one lap of marching back and forth, really make sure we have that active arch and really make sure it's hard enough, right? Put sled weight on there, put some actual kettlebells in your hand, make sure the weight is challenging enough so it's totally worth your time because that will force the foot muscles in the ankle to really work super hard and drive that foot up into that anti-flat foot position. So with that being said, if you are interested in any of this kind of stuff, we have a fantastic three-day symposium coming up. We're gonna talk about all the things related to injuries for ankle, for knee, for lower back. We're gonna talk about strength and conditioning for gymnastics. We're going to talk about vault bars, beam floor drills, a lot of beam basics and stuff that we'll talk about a lot of these kind of foot and ankle strengthening development pieces. So if you're anyone involved in gymnastics in any way, shape or form, be sure to jump onto this opportunity because tickets are actually not going to be on sale for much longer. And you're going to want access to all the recordings, all the handouts and all the expert lectures that we have 30 lectures over the course of three days from all around the world. So every country we have about 15 countries represented right now. I'm really excited to share this with you. But if you love this content, you've been watching the YouTube channel the last month or so as we put out more videos, you absolutely want to sign up for this and make sure you get into it. But if you just want to enjoy the video, that's totally cool as well. Make sure you stop right now, head down to the bottom and enter hashtag 24 shift to get that giveaway. You might win tickets to that symposium, but also to that course of your choosing, we can put that in as well. And then also make sure that you just hit the notification bell, the subscription bell to make sure every week you're getting the newest content updated to you to help you learn more, but also spread our channel and make sure we get into people's inboxes. So hope you all enjoyed this video and it was useful.